foggy, chilly Sunday in East Rutherford, New Jersey, just moments away from the first kick. The final five weeks, is this an audition to keep his job for Jets quarterback Mark Sanchez? Laura, you caught up with him before the game. Tom, Mark told me, when you're thinking about leaving college early and you're talking to all those agents and those coaches, nobody tells you to get ready for the struggles you are going to face or the booze you're going to hear. He said, you do not envision that until you're in it. He said the day after the Patriots lost, he was sitting in the cold tub talking to his dad on the phone. He said to him, Mark, you've been imagining throwing game-winning touchdowns your whole life. You never imagine throwing those interceptions, did you? Tommy said he has been growing so much throughout these struggles, especially learning about the perspective that he's gaining. He said those two AFC championship games and those four road playoff wins certainly don't seem as easy as they did back then. Well, they do not. He came on board the same time Rex Ryan took over as Jets head coach, and in each of his first two years, they went to the AFC title game, 8-8 eight and eight last year, 4-7 and seven this season. Ken Wisenhunt in his sixth year, the winningest all-time coach in Cardinals franchise history. A couple of NFC West titles and a trip to the Super Bowl. But right now, all he's thinking about is ending the seven-game losing streak. They did not win in October. They did not win in November. And here we go in the month of December. Jets have won the toss, deferred to get the football in the second half. William Powell waiting back. This one angled near the sideline, and Powell up to get it at the seven-yard line. Puts it back to the inside and dropped right at the 20-yard line. So out comes Ryan Lindley, the rookie out of San Diego State, making his second NFL start and working with a new center. Well, oddly enough, Ornberger and he are used to one another because he was the backup, and as backups together, at least they're familiar with one another. They need Beanie Wells to have a big game, and obviously Larry Fitzgerald. Michael Floyd might be able to step in for the injured Andre Roberts and be a counterpunch to the running game and Larry Fitzgerald. Chris Wells returned last week after missing seven weeks with a knee injury along with turf toe. Lindley made that first NFL start after coming on in relief two weeks ago of John Skelton in Atlanta. And this is Beanie Wells, and he's dropped after a one-yard gain. The Jets have not been nearly as stout this season, Brian, as they have the last three years under Rex Ryan. They need for Muhammad Wilkerson to become that singular pass rusher that can get after the quarterback. David Harris obviously anchors the linebackers, and Kyle Wilson and Antonio Cromartie have to fill that void of Darrell Revis. Revis went down in late September, and the Jets have struggled ever since. First throw for Lindley looking for Fitzgerald, and he's got it. And that is a first down up to the 45-yard line. He beat Cromarty. It's the first time these two have met in a regular season game. And I give Lindley credit for seeing right from Jump Street. He was in press coverage, press coverage against Larry Fitzgerald, given his size, his speed, his strength, his hands. He's going to go to that every time he can get that press coverage. Under 29 consecutive games now with a reception for unquestionably the future Hall of Famer Larry Fitzgerald. On a first down, it's LaRod Stevens Howley, and he's dropped in the backfield, maybe got back to the line of scrimmage by Kyle Wilson. They talked about Fitzgerald for a moment. He had three catches, Brian, last week on their opening drive, a touchdown scoring drive. Fitzgerald did not catch another pass the rest of the game. You know, every time we have the Cardinals, we talk about you've got to get the ball to Larry Fitzgerald. They want to get the ball to him. They know that. But the quarterback, Ryan Lindley, knows he can't force it. Otherwise, it turns to those interceptions that he was plagued by last week. Second throw for Lindley, and he's looking to Michael Floyd and overthrows. But the flag is down, and this will be against Kyle Wilson. Holding number 20, defense. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. That was actually a good penalty if there is such a thing by Kyle Wilson, because you can see right here, Floyd's got him beat by Jump Street. That was going to be a touchdown, but he had to get something to get him off stride. Otherwise, that was going to be a touchdown for the young rookie quarterback to the young wide receiver. <laughs> First down with the offsetting penalties. First and 10, the 
from midfield. And now Lindley throws too high and too firm for Stevens Howling. Second down at 10. Well, in sitting and talking with the coaches and visiting with Ryan Lindley, you came away very impressed with him. They talked about his calm, his understanding of what was going on. It's a fine line between being calm and being so new that you have no idea just how bad things are. Katie Wells off the right side, picks up two, maybe three. It brings up third down. And seven, Brian, what can you tell us about this rookie out of San Diego State, Ryan Lindley? Here was the book on him. This guy, the ball jumps out of his hands. He's got a great ball, good arm. He's a four-year starter. He's played a lot, but he's never been above 60%. That worries you about the completion percentage, about the accuracy. He's not a great athlete outside the pocket, so he's going to have to do it behind this very young offensive line. So now a third and seven, Arizona trying to take advantage of that holding penalty against Kyle Wilson. Football at the Jets' 47-yard line as Arizona offensive line has surrendered 46 sacks. But they get it away, it's incomplete. He had an eye on the tight end, Rob Housley. And so the Cardinals will punt. Well, and obviously this, is, this has been a huge problem for the Arizona Cardinals converting on third down it breaks up the continuity they needed desperately to get the young quarterback in some type of rhythm now they're going to put their defense on the field that's pretty good because it's a pretty good defense but at least they were able to move the ball to change the field position with this first possession Zaskadil has had an outstanding year as the Arizona putter end over end and a failed catch by Curly Jets will get it at the 12. Mark Sanchez, he's heard it from the Jets' faithful, but he'll try and turn in a big performance and give the Jets a much-needed win when we come back. Well, Brian Billick won't be doing any ice skating in Central Park over this weekend, but it's nice to have you back in the broadcast booth. After missing last week with an injured back. And Mark Sanchez back to pass on first down, just throws it in the air, and it's intercepted by the former Jet Carey Rhodes. So a poor decision on the very first pass attempt of the game by the beleaguered Mark Sanchez. And it couldn't have been scripted better. Pressure up the middle. This is where they know they can affect Mark Sanchez and his throw. And the one thing this defense knew coming in, if they were going to beat the Jets on the road and get off the schneid, as it were, in terms of losing, they were going to have to not only get a turnover, but maybe even have to score defensively. For Sanchez, that is his 16th turnover this year. 11 interceptions to go along with five fumbles lost. So they'll take a look at it on the change of possession. And the Cardinals in business when we return. Play. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Interception, first down. Yeah, let's go back to this pressure, Tom. It's, we can see exactly what the plan is of the Arizona Cardinals. Ray Horton, the defensive coordinator from the Pittsburgh Steelers. They actually do a nice job picking it up. But they want to bring pressure right down the pipe on Mark Sanchez. They believe that's the way he turns the ball over. And they were right, right from Jump Street. William Powell, his first carry of the afternoon. And he's inside the 20, down to the 19-yard line. A good pickup on first down. So now officially into the red zone for the Cardinals. You may remember this was an offense two weeks ago that forced Atlanta into six turnovers in one game. The Cardinals were only able to score 13 points off of those six Atlanta turnovers. Yeah, and if I'm Ray Horton, the defensive coordinator, I got to be going to the head coach saying, Coach, I would have thought six turnovers would have been enough. Second down, they give it to Beanie Wells, and he's met head-on, trying to get to the first down marker. Denied that spot by Muhammad Wilkerson. And you brought his name up earlier. Wilkerson, good, solid year, finished strong in 2011, has become the kind of player, getting closer to becoming the kind of player they expected. 
when they took him in the first round. Well, you're talking about a first-round draft choice, and they talk about just that. He's using his hands much better. He's knowing how to use that leverage, that six-inch punch we talk about that goes on between an offensive and a defensive lineman. Put it down, and they give it to Wells. LaRon Landry comes up from the strong safety spot to meet him. Did Wells get enough to convert the third in less than a yard? He appears to be, well, maybe right on the, the nose of the ball. We'll find out. They're going to bring it out, I'm sure, in measure. Well, as we always say, the yellow line is unofficial, but it's pretty darn close. I actually thought the spot was a little bit short. I thought he got a little bit more. I don't think this is going to be good enough. Now the question becomes, does Ken Wisenhunt, sitting where they're sitting on the road, go for it to keep the drive alive? What would you do? I, why not? I mean, you're four and seven. Why, why not? What, you know, at this point, you got a young quarterback. You don't know how many times you're going to be down here. You want to run the ball. I mean, if you can't get it here, at the very least, you've got them inside the 20. Why not go for it? Well, Ken Wisenhunt has gone for it plenty on fourth down this year. 18 tries, converting just seven at times. They line up in the eye formation. And they're going to sell out to stop the run right here. Fourth and less than a yard, and stopped as well as behind the line of scrimmage. So after the interception by Rhodes, the Jets' defense stands tall on third and one, and then fourth and one. On, on third and short, every step you take horizontally, you are losing ground. He needed to get downhill. Just follow your full, fullback, Anthony Sherman, right here. You're going to get the first down if you just trust the play, trust the fullback. He started way too wide for my liking. So the Cardinals turn it over on downs inside the Jets' 20. First carry for Bilal Powell, who's been getting more and more playing time for the New York Jets over the last couple of weeks. Mark Sanchez on the very first offensive play from scrimmage through an interception. And, of course, he lines up behind one of the game's very best in Nick Mangold. Sean Green is a downhill runner. They love having Dustin Keller back. It's a big receiver that a comfort zone for Mark Sanchez. And obviously on the outside, they want to see if they can get the young rookie, Stephen Hill, cranked up. Without fly Gates, who was injured last week. And there's the aforementioned rookie out of Georgia Tech, Stephen Hill. Third down coming up, and we quickly check in for the first time today with Kurt Menefee back in Los Angeles. Well, a matchup of potential playoff teams between the Bears and Seahawks, and follow the bouncing receiver. Earl Bennett up and over the goal line for the 12-yard score. Bears on the board first, 7-0, Tom, and welcome back, Coach Bennett. Thank you, I appreciate that. There's a news flash for you, a turnover by the Chicago oh, Bears. Who the fuck? 15 and 5 with Jake Cutler is here started the last two seasons and now Sanchez looking around and he tries to get the first down and this will depend on where they spot it. He needed to get to the 28 yard line. I mean he is right on it. Yeah they bunched it up and he just couldn't find that angle on the short pass on third down. Able to scramble around. I like the fact it's not there. He puts the ball away. Probably learned from last week. Didn't want to run into the back of anybody. Cover the ball up. Knew exactly where the first down marker was. When I mean exactly, I mean exactly by inches. A try earlier in the week put together videotapes of all of his players who handle the ball on offense and how they have not handled it appropriately to his liking with all the Jets turnovers. And a good throw by Sanchez to the backup tight end Jeff Cumberland. His 20th catch of the year, and that's a first down of the Cardinal 48-yard line. Good throw there. Well, Mark Sanchez has to love the size of the tight ends here. Both Cumberland and, of course, Dustin Keller, who's just back into the lineup. 
You love the size with big tight ends. They're also a big receiving group. We've already talked about Stephen Hill. He's every bit of 6'4". Even Chas Shillings has that size. It allows you to put the ball up on the rim, so to speak. It allows you to be a lot more accurate, take a few more chances with big receivers. Being a 24, seven and a half to play in the opening quarter, and Powell, good strong run. Caught from behind, down to the 40. That'll be a gain of eight. Arizona among the best defensive teams in the NFL under their coordinator who will undoubtedly be interviewed for a head coaching job at the end of the year, Ray Horton. Well, Darnell Dock, of course, today they're without Clayus Campbell, but they really feel like Dan Williams is coming along. Darrell Washington, really among the best linebackers in the game right now. And Patrick Peterson, for my money, the best corner in the National Football League. Really? Right, really Complete. Let's also throw in. He's pretty good return guy, too. Flags down as Powell carries down to the 35, which would be more than enough for a first down, but will it stand? Offside, number 92, defense. Penalty is declined. Result of the play is a first down. Right there you see it, Dan Williams, a nose tackle. Yeah, obviously felt like he knew something about the snap count. Of course, these guys spend all week long trying to get a bead on what's the snap count, what's the inflection, does the quarterback bend his knees, does the center squeeze the ball, anything to get a jump. Couldn't get it there, he's not leaving. Seven play in the drive from the Cardinals, 35, blitz coming, they pick it up, Sanchez looking for Schillens, he's unable to hang on, good coverage. Tolar there along the sideline. Up here to knock it out of his hands. Well, you've got to watch protection first. This is an offensive group, offensive line-wise, that has been together since day one. That's a huge advantage. You get a clean pocket like that very rarely in the NFL. Mark Sanchez, like anybody, can deliver in that situation. The question becomes, like we saw earlier, what happens when the pressure is on? Kill, kill, kill. Hey, Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Will delay to Powell and did not fool the nose tackle Dan Williams there. A gain of a yard. It brings up third down and nine for the Jets. You know, the Jets running game, Tom, right now is a very much a four and five hole running game. By that, I mean it's going to be between the tackles. It's going to be downhill. They really don't have a lot of explosiveness. We might see a little bit more of Joe McKnight. He gives them that little bit of pop. Either it's out of the backfield or even shifting out into a receiver position and motioning back into the backfield to give them a little bit more spark rather than that tough wedging it right down the middle. Cardinals showing blitz. They love coming after the quarterback. And here they come. And Sanchez able to duck underneath one tackle. Rolling throws caught by Stephen Hill, his second catch of the afternoon, but short of the first down by about three yards. So this will be roughly a 45-yard field goal try for Nick Folk. Yeah, you cannot miss on the outside. This is an empty backfield, which means you're a man short. You get a free run at the quarterback. You don't even have to defeat a block. You cannot overrun the quarterback in that situation. Folk up and down last year has been pretty solid this year. He's hit on 15 out of 18. And this officially will be a 46-yard field goal try. Good snap. Good hold, and off the upright. Nick Folk missing from 46 yards out. So now the Cardinals get the football for the third time in this opening quarter. 5-15 to play in it. Whitley setting up the screen and just overthrew LaRod Stevens howling. Second and ten. Saturday, the UFC returns to Fox. As lightweight champion Benson Henderson puts his title on the line against top contender Nate Diaz, highlighting a full night of epic fights. Coverage of UFC on Fox 5 begins Saturday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, only on Fox. Well 
asked for a gain of close to four. Brings up third down and six. And just some of the names, some key names inactive for both sides today. We begin with the Cardinals. Kevin Cobb still unable to go. Andre Roberts, a big part of their offense. Todd, he was not played since the second week of the year. And now third straight week without Calais Campbell. Yeah, Todd Heath, you see right there, just hasn't really been able to get into any kind of flow here in Arizona. Would have been a big asset, particularly to a rookie quarterback that needs that presence at tight end. Well, he's started to practice for the first time this week since week two, so maybe next week. Crossing pattern well short of the first down. On the catch by the man who has taken over for Heath and has done a real nice job, Rob Housley. Yeah, you can see right here, this is nice. The quarterback, now Lindley's a big target. Now, he's a big man. He can see eye to eye. Talk about the comfort zone of the tight end. He's the guy that you can just dump the ball off to in a very comfortable situation. You don't have to force the ball down the field. That's something that's going to be a big asset for the rookie quarterback as he progresses along. Hurley waiting back at his own 10 on a punt by Dave Zastadil. Very short punt. But takes a favorable Arizona bout. And will be down to the 19th. Still no score in the Meadowlands. Sun starting to break through some of the fog and the clouds we had earlier today. So a little bit of sunshine. For the first time with 3.44 to play in the opening quarter. Sean Green and he is leveled by Adrian Peterson. Maybe getting back to the line of scrimmage. Tom, I want you to listen to me on this now. This Tuesday, Fox Fight Week has four knockout rounds of nonstop comedy. Wow. With all new heavyweight episodes of Raising Hope, Ben and Kate, New Girl, and The Mindy Project. Take on the funniest night on television starts this Tuesday at 8, 7 Central, part of Fox Fight Week. I know what I'm doing Tuesday night. You'll be dialed in. You'll be right. I'm going to practice some more of my promos. <laughs> Well, you've really taken the proverbial bull by the horn and run with those things in recent weeks. Across the middle to Dustin Keller in the big tight end. Getting healthier and healthier. He virtually missed the first five games of the year with a bad hamstring. That is his 27th catch of the year. He has been a mighty good one since coming out of Purdue five years ago. Well, we talked about the comfort zone of the tight end for the quarterback. When we talked to Mark Sanchez on Friday, when we brought up Dustin Keller, you could see the smile come over his face. The fact that he had this big target back in his arsenal to add what they've been doing. First down up to the 31, short drop. Nice catch by Jeremy Curley along the sideline right at the 50. This is an impressive throw because Patrick Peterson's usually pretty good. He had his eyes on it. He knew what was coming, but he couldn't quite get his hips back around to break up the pass to Curley. Nice throw and catch by the New York Giants. They're going to need a lot more of that if they're going to continue their drives. A lot to Keller, a lot to the outside, then continue to pound between the tackles. Okay, you work my one, my one. Curley, the team leader in receptions, receiving Wait. yards. Walked earlier, he's also brought back a punt for a touchdown this year for the Jets, I beg your pardon. And now Green off to the right side behind blockers and shoved by Mangold for a couple of more yards to the 44-yard line. Tom, I want you to watch as we progress here. They're moving the tight end around a little bit prior to the snap. What Tony Sperano, the offensive coordinator, told us is they're trying to reset the front of this aggressive Arizona Cardinal defense, try to change one look to the other to see if they can either get them to move or create a vulnerability by saying staying static in their lineman, as you can see right here. Brought in an extra offensive lineman. Strong running once again by Sean Green, who rushed for better than a thousand yards a season ago. And this year up over 700 yards, a legitimate chance to make it back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rushing years. Although, Brian, they have not been as good running the ball the last two years as they were the first two years under Rex Ryan. No, and Rex Ryan, when he hired Tony Soprano, he said, if we need to run the ball 50 times to win, we're going to do it. If we need to throw the ball 50 times to win, we're going to run it. We are going to run the ball this year, and it just hasn't materialized. Play fake, and now Sanchez fires, and it's 
intercepted again. And once more, the former Jet Perry Rhodes has the football. And he brings it to the Jets' 47-yard line. Second interception in the opening quarter. Thrown by Mark Sanchez. Well, why does Rex Ryan run and run the ball so much? Because then it allows you to play fake and have the wide open receivers down the field like he does here. This should have been a reception, but he just overthrew it. Kerry Rhodes, all he had to do was play center field and wait for the ball to come down to him. Of course, Rex Ryan had some unfavorable words for Kerry Rhodes, who played here under Ryan for two years. Left to go to Arizona in a trade in 2010. Rex Ryan in his book called him selfish, called him a Hollywood type. And that one thrown away, miscommunication there. They tried to ask Rex Ryan about it during the week this week. He would not get into it, nor would Kerry Rhodes take the bait. But, you know, really, in all honesty, if you're going to write something about somebody in a book, it's been two years since somebody's asked him about it. Somebody ought to own up to at least saying, yeah, I said it. Yeah, but it never turns out well when you get into a back and forth with a player. It, it, it was what it was. Anytime you let a player go someplace else, you quasi-fired him. And I don't know anybody feels good about that. So kind of predictable. William Powell for a gain of three. And that will more than likely, in fact, it will be the final play of this opening quarter. A pair of turnovers for the Jets. But the Cardinals, unable to take advantage of the first one, can they take advantage of the second? No score as we go to the second quarter in the Meadowlands. You're watching the NFL on Fox. <laughs> Opening play of the second quarter. No score from MetLife Stadium in the Meadowlands of New Jersey. A third down and seven for the Cardinals. Good ball to Jets, 46 yard line. Jets coming after Lindley. He gets it away. Should have been intercepted by Antonio Cromartie. So here we have it, Brian. You talked from the very beginning of the game what it is like during the week for these head coaches. You've been in a spot for Rex Ryan, for Ken Wisenhunt. But now the game begins. And here you are in a scoreless game just starting the second quarter and both teams missing big time scoring opportunities. And that's what concerns me. Missed opportunities. Arizona's had two interceptions and hasn't been able to do anything with it. New York kind of been up and down the field. They've already even missed a field goal. This game doesn't have the feel yet that they're emotionally into it. They can take advantage of whatever comes their way. That's what would concern me right now. The crowd's not helping on either side. When you go on the road as a visiting team like Ken Wisenhunt, you're crowning, counting on even that negative energy. Guys, we got to fight the crowd. Right now, nobody has to fight anything because right now these people aren't engaged and Rex Ryan's got to find some way to energize his team because it's not coming from the circumstances. The Jets seem to be running the ball pretty well here today. But you take a look at their possessions. They uh, went 10 plays, 54 yards before the Knicks. 46-yard field goal try by Folk, and already a pair of interceptions have been thrown in the game by Mark Sanchez. Now, no Tim Tebow today. We talked about that. He is one of the inactives for the Jets as Joe McKnight has his first carry, as you thought he might, Brian Billick. And he's up to the 27-yard line, a good gain on first down. So the third quarterback, who was on injured reserve last year, Greg McElroy, is active as the backup quarterback today. And we just saw that speed sweep we talked earlier about them using Joe McKnight. Try to add to the outside aspect of the game. Maybe the big play. Everything else is going to be downhill, but they're going to use Joe McKnight like we just saw him. Either to hand the ball to him or fake him. Maybe even a boot and waggle off it as well. McKnight once more. And on a second down and three. He maybe picks up a half yard. Ronald Talley coming up to make the tackle. Well, they've got, we talked about, Tom, about getting into what the running game sets up big plays. Here's what the running game does for you as well. You now have to convert on a third and two. And New York has been decent, not great, but decent on third down conversions. Certainly on this down and distance, you got to convert. Well, on third and less than three, they are 60% converting on third down. Not this time. 
Sam Ocho picking up his first sack since the third week of the season. Darnell Dockett there as well. And here's part of the problem that Mark Sanchez is having to deal with. And I'm not here to make excuses for Mark Sanchez. He has such a new group of receivers around him. As you saw there, many times he has to wait it out. Are you open? Are you where you're supposed to be? He ends up holding the ball too long like he did there, partly because he can't be absolutely sure that everybody's where they're supposed to be doing what they're supposed to be doing. Run by Robert Malone, and they're not going to give Peterson a chance to return it. An ugly start for the New York offense. We're scoreless in the second quarter. Take a stroll, Brian Billick, over the Brooklyn Bridge. Heck, you can come into Brooklyn now, watch NBA basketball. The Brooklyn Nets are over there now. How about that? Is this not one of the great cities? We had a great time Friday night. I'm not going to tell you where we went. Gonna keep it a secret. Yeah, otherwise I won't be able to get in next time. Like Yogi used to say, it's so good nobody ever goes there. Here's a handoff on first hand. And Petey Wells bounces it to the outside and defended beautifully by Brian Thomas. And now his 11th year out of the University of Alabama, Birmingham, coming all the way back from that torn Achilles a season ago. It's very difficult to get outside of this New York. Jets defense if for no other reason they do so much pressuring with their safeties on the outside looping on the outside Many times they may be bringing a pressure for pass purposes and all of a sudden you run into the teeth of it Loss at six second down and 16 from the Cardinals from the 26 short drop slant caught by early Doucette Who's active in playing this week? And he's up to the 34. Of course, the quarterback, John Skelton, began the year, got injured in King Kevin Cobb. Cardinals went 4-0 to begin the season. But then Cobb injured week six. John Skelton returns. He was benched in Atlanta in favor of Ryan Lindley. He made his first start last week. It turned out to be their seventh consecutive loss since beginning the year. Four and oh, that's the first time that's ever happened in league history. And on third down, and eight blitz coming, and Lindley just throws it away. Tom, when you're as bad on third down as the Arizona Cardinals are, look, you, you, you got, looks like a team picture of the New York Jets here. Now they're just all coming at him right now. He doesn't even know what he's looking at. I just got to get the ball out quick. When you're as bad as the Cardinals are, they're 32nd in the league, last in the league on third down. They're averaging, and when you're talking about 28%, you're talking about one or two full series a game that you lose when you can't convert on a third down compared to even just the average in the league. That's tough to overcome offensively. Well, there's only two veterans on the uh, offensive line, Darren College and Adam Snyder, and they're the ones right now saying, guys, let's calm down. We can do some things here, but we're just rushing ourselves. We're getting too many opportunities, too many missed opportunities. Well, the Jets begin this drive from the 10-yard line, and Sean Green with a gain of close to four on first down. 11.30 to play until halftime, no score. Well, I'm waiting to see this Arizona Cardinal group. They've had success when they've been very active in the middle of the line, Tom. I expect them to pick that pace up, not necessarily on a second medium, but particularly on third down to see if they can force another turnover by Mark Sanchez. Got to get him up the middle. Steps away from pressure and throws down the field, and it's intercepted. What an unbelievable play by Patrick Peterson and did he catch it number one once he fell down was he touched by Chaz Schillens what a remarkable athletic play by Patrick Peterson and Tom this is why I told you I think he's the best corner in the game right now he baited Mark Sanchez to throw this ball he hung back knowing that he could close the ground to make this type of interception and I'm not sure he didn't just take it away from Schillens that's that's absolutely brilliant and he set it up by willfully trailing the play daring Mark Sanchez to throw his third interception 
Well, if it stands, and it will stand, that is the fifth interception of the season for Patrick Peterson in the third throw in this game by Mark Sanchez, who, by the way, now has more interceptions this year than he does touchdowns. Lindley on first down, nearly intercepted on a batted ball. David Harris about a half step short. You can see last week what I'm talking about here against the St. Louis Rams. He trails just enough, just enough to make you think that he's beat. And then he plays long. That's a popular term in the NFL right now. That means I have length. I have long arms. I have speed. I make it impossible for you to get the ball into the receiver, particularly on plays down the field. Well, just no running room for Chris Wells. That's a gain of a yard. See the numbers on Sanchez. They're ugly. Well, the bottom line is the numbers offensively outside of the interceptions are uglier for the Cardinals. I mean, they can't do anything. Well, right now they're bleeding to death slowly. I know they want to be careful with their young quarterback, Ryan Lindley. He threw four interceptions last week, but they've already taken one shot down the field with Larry Fitzgerald when he was pressed up. They've got him pressed up right now. They need to take advantage of this. Now he backs off, but it's still one-on-one. -on -one. You can see everybody else is bunched up in here. You've got to find a way to get the ball to Larry Fitzgerald. Larry down in nine. Good protection this time and looking for Floyd. And it's intercepted the other way. LeRon Landry crossing midfield. Tackled at the 38-yard line. And the Cardinals give it right back to the Jets. Twenty three yard return after the interception the second of the year for Leron Landry And look at this lack of offense 11 drives combined by both teams five punts four picks a missed field goal And Arizona earlier unable to convert on third and one and then fourth and a foot. So now the Jets can they take advantage of the takeaway? They give it to Green on first down, and he's back to the line of scrimmage, second and ten. Tom, we talk all the time about corners have to have short memories in the National Football League. Quarterbacks equally have to have a short memory. Mark Sanchez cannot be thinking about the three interceptions he's thrown any more than Ryan Lindley can think about the interception he just threw, but you have to recognize why I threw them. He did not know what coverage he was throwing into, and right now Mark Sanchez has to draw on his experience to recognize the throws he's going to make because he can't afford another turnover. Well, thrown behind Curley. It looked like a ball that should have been caught. Let's check in quickly with Kurt Menefee back in Los Angeles. Guys, you know it's December because here's a Rudolph sighting. Kyle Rudolph, the tight end of the Vikings, scores from seven yards out. Puts Minnesota on the board. They're down by a field goal in the second quarter at Green Bay. Tom and Bryant. The Kyle Rudolph out of Notre Dame. And we know the Fighting Irish now. Thank Coach you. will be taking on the Crimson Tide of Alabama. National Championship game of college football. And a big weekend of college football here on Fox. Third down and you gain three. And it is three and out after the interception. Well, you're going to see right from the... He wanted to go to Larry Fitzgerald up here. He's looking there, but they jump underneath the coverage here. He can't. You can't go late down the field as a secondary read. The young quarterback's going to learn that. Nothing good comes from throwing the ball late on your second choice. Well, they're going to send out the field goal unit. Nick Folk. Three of three from 50 and beyond. This will be from 52 yards. Off the upright again. And this is a live ball. No, they're saying after it hit the upright, it is not a live ball. Still no score in the Meadowlands. So the beat goes on. Nick Folk. That's a long one here. I mean, it's 52-yarder. Hit the upright. But missed earlier from 46. 
And we are still scoreless. The last nine combined pass attempts. One completed pass, five incompletions, three interceptions. In fact, we have nine completed passes in this game. Four interceptions. And only eight first downs. But after the long miss by Folk, good field position once more for Lindley. It is he throws. Big hit by Muhammad Wilkerson. And Tom, here's part of the challenge for the Arizona Cardinals. When you look at the offensive line, and it is a reshuffle, you've got Adam Snyder and Darren College. They are the veterans. But you've got two rookies on the outside in Potter and Massey, and your backup center, Orenberger. Now, the good thing is, since your veteran leadership is at the guard, they surround your new center, and those rookies on the outside can look to the inside for a little bit of help. But still, right now, it's not doing a lot for them. Second down and 10, and the catch is made by Early Doucette. And he's up to the 47-yard line. That'll be a gain of five. Good coverage and a tackle by Kyle Wilson. You know, in fairness to Bobby Massey, the rookie out of Mississippi, the right tackle, in the first seven games, he allowed 12 sacks. He's only allowed one since, and none in the last three games. And the coaches will tell you, this guy is he's taking his lumps. But trying to get better and better every week. And I like to look at both these tackles. But I'm not real comfortable just yet getting my paycheck on them. They will at some point develop. And this could be a good developing offensive line. But right now, it has its struggles. Good. And this is ugly. Well, here's the difficulty for Ken Wisenhut, Tom. Remember when he had John Skelton in, of course, he originally got hurt is how he was replaced. When they brought him back, he started out terribly. And Ken Wisnut said, look, we can't go on this way. I got to make a change. Well, now he's gone with the rookie. You can't do that with the rookie. When you go with the rookie, you're either going to let him develop, you're going to let him learn, or you're not. And now, even though it's been ugly, he's got to stick with him to see if he can somehow pull himself out of this. Castadil punts it through the end zone, so Sanchez and the Jets will get it back with 7.23 to play until halftime. 7.23 to play until halftime, Jets with the football. First down from their own 20. Come on. Powell in the backfield behind Mark Sanchez. Line is a Second down. And Tom, Stephen Hill, we talked about coming out of Georgia Tech where they throw to the receivers about once every millennium. It's been a steep curve, but they've been pleased with the production of him and the growth curve. There, clearly, Sanchez saw something that Stephen Hill didn't. And, you know, the ying didn't match up with the yang. And, uh, boy, to be this late in the season making those kind of errors, hard to understand. Sanchez takes to McKnight, rolls, throws, and they get his this feet, time. Get his As the catch is made by Hill, and that's the first down up to the 35-yard line. That is the first, first down of this second quarter. And that'll bring a smile to the face of even Greg McElroy. You know, Coach, he's sitting over there. You're never rooting against a teammate. You don't do that. But you know he's just waiting for his chance. Tim Tebow not available today. And I think Ken Wisenhunt's going to challenge this. Patrick Peterson was begging to his coach, saying he didn't think that Stephen Hill had full possession before he got out of bounds. Arizona is challenging the ruling on the field of a completed pass. And Wisenhunt, not a bad guy to gamble with. He's won five of his seven challenges this year. I want you to rock, watch the right foot here. The left foot is down. He's got possession, but the right foot is out of bounds. The knee did not come down before the right foot was out of bounds. Patrick Peterson was right in telling his coach to challenge it, at least from that look. Had the knee been able to drag in as well, 
but it did not. I think uh, this thing's going to come back. You know, and you, you always get the players are going to turn to you and say, challenge it, challenge it, challenge it. And then you look, and the guy had both feet and elbow and his left cheek in. But in this instance, the player's right because that knee, it's right foot uh, right there. I think you see the right foot out of bounds before the knee comes down. The only thing that could come back contrary to that is if the official decides that there's not enough evidence does he have the right well, see, foot I think there. he has a right foot Let's, there. But does he have possession? Let's see. Yep, that one's going to be close. At the very least, let's remember that it was called a completion. Question is, was that possession there when the right foot simultaneously? Mike Pereira from Los Angeles, what do you think based on what you're seeing? Well, we broke it all down in here, all looking at it. We think the right foot is still down on the ground when he got possession. And remember, it was ruled a catch. So he's got to have indisputable visual evidence to overturn. It's close. But as we look at it, he's got possession with that right toe still on the ground. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It is a catch. Arizona is charged with its first timeout. So, as any gambler will tell you, Ken Wisenhunt might have been five out of seven, but if you start betting with people long enough, no matter who it is, you're not going to win. The house always wins, right? And, and they were so focused, as I was, with that second step, not seeing the, the first one. I think that's what Patrick Peterson was pleading for as well. But now Mark Sanchez not in the game. They have in the Wildcat formation, that is Sean Green. And now in motion at night, Green, a play fake, will keep it himself up to the 40. That's a five-yard game. And now Sanchez will come back from the Jets' sideline. 6.40 to play until halftime. A second down and five. And the Jets from their own 40. Arizona defense ranked seventh overall in the NFL on pace to its highest overall ranking since Buddy Ryan was the head coach back in 1994. Was Rex Ryan was on that staff. Catch made for a first down up to the 47-yard line, and once more, the rookie second round. Stephen Hill, we've seen miscues of plenty. First play of the game for the Jets. Interception. Field goal try off the left upright. A second pick into the arms of Kerry Rhodes. A third pick on a dazzling play made by Peterson. But after the Cardinals turned it back over, the Bolt missed a 52-yard field goal try once more oh, off the up. upright. Green on first down. And a good carry. That'll be a gain of six crossing midfield. With Mark Sanchez, the question for me becomes the consistency of his completion percentage. He has yet to be above 60% in any year on his career. And their third down conversion rate in the time he's been in the NFL has been middle of the pack or worse. It's the accuracy of his passes, his ability to consistently get completions that has me concerned and I think has the New York Jets concerned about indeed can he continue to progress and be their guy. This is again, they just hit on the outside, but this is, you can see the athleticism and the speed. Brilliant job. Nice job on the outside by Darrell Washington, scraping to the outside and cutting off Green, not letting them have back-to-back -back plays on the outside, which started off on a good first down play. Now in second medium, you're back to a third medium on a team, like we said, that's been average at best on third down. Way down at five, short drop. And Keller on the catch. Stretches out. Where do they spot it? They're saying he's a yard short of a first down. Watch Washington again. I think this young man is beginning to approach the level of a Patrick Willis 
a Navarro Bowman, both of them in San Francisco. This guy's as complete a player as there is in the league right now. Nice hit. The question is, indeed, where did he end up getting the, the ball? Did he get it placed forward enough? You'd have liked to have seen. He tries to stretch it out there. Where is he on the sideline when that ball broke the plane of the first down? And Rex Ryan has thrown a challenge flag to challenge where that ball was spotted. Did he reach out to pick up the first down before he stepped out of bounds? And that's the key New York right here. Is challenging the ruling on the field. He, he reaches the ball short and it looks the like he, to there. Right there, he's not out of bounds yet. Nice athletic move for Keller to reach it out. Boy, based on what we just saw, he's still in bounds. That ball has crossed the first down plane. Well, Rex Ryan with the challenge. Now, the key here on the challenge is they'll replace the ball, but unless it's for the first down, you technically lose the challenge. It looks there as though that will yield the first down. Therefore, he's going to be able to hold on to his challenge. I think right there, that's clear cut. Right there, that's the best look. And these are the down markers over on this side of the field. They change from one side of the half to the other. And I think they've seen it as well, Ken Wisenhunt. And remember now, the fans and the coaches can look up on the, uh, the smart visions, the jumbotrons, or whatever it is that's here in this stadium, because we all get to see what the officials are seeing. And if they're seeing what we're seeing, I think both sides know this is a first down. Right there, they're seeing the same thing we are. And right now, it's taking just long enough. Whether Where do we spot the ball? Of course, a major share of my finds in this league revolved around replay and my observations about what they were doing in that booth during the time. And so I'll just be quiet here and see what they come out with. And we have documented that number. Uh, not quite the federal deficit, but nonetheless a hefty number. Coach Billick, you racked up through the years with the National Football League office and Mike Pereira back when he was the head of NFL officials. Well, the one that got him the maddest is when I accused them of looking at pictures of their grandkids in there. <laughs> After of hearing the should play, the receiver extends the ball past the 44-yard line as he goes out of bounds. It is sufficient for a first down. New York will not be charged with a timeout. And that certainly appears to be the right call. Nice move by Keller, recognizing where he was, where the chains were, and just how much he needed. So a first down at the Arizona 44-yard line. Four interceptions in the game. Only two third down conversions, 12 attempts. Five by the two teams, but... Jets are hoping to score here before halftime. Now the four minutes to play until the intermission and Green right behind the middle of that offensive line inside the 40 down to the 38-yard line. I'll take it before halftime. I'll take it half, after halftime. Tom, I'll take a score anytime I can get it with this group because it, that may be enough. And I hate to see this now. Dustin Keller just getting back from injury. He's already had an impact in the game. And now, hobbling off again. Hopefully that's short-term, but with the frustration you just saw, I doubt it. Well, there's a hamstring before that kept Keller virtually on the sidelines for the first five games of the year. Sanchez in trouble. Coming off the corner was Adrian Wilson. And then Stan Sanchez had to try and step away from him. And they just ran into a wall. Talk about the timing of this. This is brilliant. And, and very few better than Adrian Wilson. He, he's obviously on the back end of his career. But the combination of turnovers and sacks, there's been none better in this league than Adrian Wilson. Last time in the NFL, we had a scoreless game at halftime. It was last December. Denver and Chicago. Of course, Jay Cutler was injured. Tim Tebow, the quarterback of Denver, this time last year. That 
ball batted in the air and incomplete. So do you send out the punt team? Yes, they will. They will not think about going for it here on a fourth down when you're four and seven on the season. Well, you know, we've already seen what two of those look like. <laughs> Yeah. You know, in terms of long field goals, so I don't like my percentages there. Uh, I haven't been real good on third down, so maybe I can pin them down. Maybe I can get them down inside the 10, inside the 5, because they haven't been doing much offensively either. Peterson, the fair catch at the 8-yard line. Well, we just mentioned the name Tim Tebow, and though he's inactive with a couple of fractured ribs, he did take time, as he generally always does. Uh, to spend with those less fortunate. I know I really like it. Young lady from Tim Tebow's foundation and all the work he does and well, you go back to them making that trade to get Tebow, and of course it made huge headlines as Beanie Wells is up to the 18-yard line. And you know, a lot of people around here say it's a, it's a disaster, it's a failed experiment. I would say, Brian, it's an experiment that, that was never conducted. I mean, you can't say that he was incapable of doing all the things that maybe you wanted him to do. You just never gave him a chance to do it. Yeah, I don't know what it was, and I don't know why they acquired him with all the things that go with him when we have not seen him either in even a limited package or coming in for a Mark Sanchez. So we may never know. We're down to the two-minute warning. No score in the middle lane. Two-minute warning. No score. Arizona with a ball, second down and a yard. After a gain of nine on the carry by Chris Wells, and they'll hand it off to Wells once more. Bounces off a couple of tackles. And a good second and then third and fourth effort to get a first down. Clock running. Cardinals have two timeouts remaining. But they're going to huddle up. They're in no hurry, apparently not wanting to take the chance of having Ryan Lindley throw one away. Yeah, normally I'd be saying, well, how else are you going to learn about a young quarterback except to put him in a two-minute situation? But the way the game is right now, you're on the road. Conservative, probably the way to go. They're going to let him throw it on first down. Housley bumped out of bounds at the 25-yard line. By the way, that first down for the Cardinals just a moment ago, their only first down of this second quarter. Their last five possessions. They went four and out, or three and out, four times. And on the other possession, Lindley threw an interception. Lindley steps up, fires, and had a wide open Michael Floyd standing at the 40-yard line and could not connect with him. I talked about Mark Sanchez's completion percentage here in the NFL. One of the problems I have with Ryan Lindley at San Diego State, and he did some interesting things, some good things, but he was never above 60% in college as well. Uh, not a high completion guy, made big plays, actually had pretty good decision-making process, didn't have a lot of turnover, but was not a particularly accurate quarterback. So the numbers 5 out of 16 with an interception. Lindley is still not thrown. An NFL touchdown pass. And that one just thrown away. I got to be honest with you, Brian. And, uh, and obviously, we're only through a half, and Lindley is only a rookie, so it's not necessarily taking him to task. Sanchez is in his fourth year. But this is about as ugly and as inept a game offensively by two NFL teams as I can recall in a long, long time. And, 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 this, and well, then here's your shot right here. Well, this is what you got to do. Here's how you generate some offense. Racing all the way down to the 35-yard line, and that is good enough for a first down is Rashad Johnson, the backup strong safety. So when it's going like it's going, you try things like this, and that is a 40-yard fake punt 
by the Arizona Cardinals. And look at the way this is all wadded up. This is obviously something they saw on film. It was a check play, which means if they hadn't aligned that way, they'd have checked it off and punted it. But obviously they saw something in their preparation. You can see right there, they're all wadded up to one side. This is a great call on the part of the Arizona Cardinals. Now we're going to find out what they think of Ryan Lindley right here. Is he going to get it in field goal position, or are they going to go for a touchdown? Incomplete out of nine on early descent. At this point, I'm not sure we don't see a draw, a trap. Give yourself a chance to maybe at half go in with the field goal. I, I don't. I don't know how to. I, I, I don't know where to go here with this young quarterback. Is this a guy I'm looking at to decide if can he be our guy going in the future? Or I want to continue to develop him? They'll tell you, hey, we want to win the game. Well, if we want to win the game, you may have to hand it off to get in field goal position. Well, I got to tell you, Brian, I mean, they are nowhere within five to ten yards of even completing a pass on the last five to seven attempts that they have made throwing the football. Yeah, I feel your pain. <laughs> you know, uh, and, and this is tough for Ken Wisdom. I don't mean to make light of it. I have been there on the road. When you, you're looking on that play sheet and you're saying, what can I run here? What can I throw here that we can execute? Well, Hazard makes a catch and he's dropped at the 30, short of the first down. So out comes another former Jet. Jay Feely kicked here in 2008 and 2009. You see the Cardinals 70 yards on their first 30 plays before they got that fake punt putting him into this field goal position. A 40-yard run by Rashad Johnson. Timeout by the Cardinals with three seconds left and we check in back in Los Angeles. What's coming up at halftime, Craig Menifee? Hey, hey, coming up on the Visa Halftime. You will get caught up on a great day of action in the NFL. Including the Detroit Lions. and Indy and Tom Brady and the Dolphins and the whole lot more. A whole bunch more. On the Visa Halftime. And uh, we will be in uh, Sarasota on the 29th for a big revival. Two shows. Two shows. <laughs> So well, that's coming up at halftime. Right now, we have actually a scoring chance for the Cardinals. First of this game, 48 yards out, Feely. And what do you know? We go to halftime with points on the board. So the fake punt, Rashad Johnson, 40 yards, leads to the field goal. It's time for the Visa halftime that starts right now. Set to begin the second half here at MetLife Stadium in the Meadowlands of New Jersey. Follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. Well, you may remember the Jets won the coin toss, deferred to getting the football in the second half. So Joe McKnight waiting back on the kick by Jay Feely. Who accounted for the only scoring in the first half by other team, by either team. But that field goal, the final seconds of the opening half. Billy spins it away, and McKnight, five yards out of his own end zone. He's brought one back 107 yards in his career, and it's went up to the 24. And let's check in downstairs with Laura Oakman. Tom, Ken Wisenhunt said what we saw the first half was a young quarterback struggling versus a lot of looks. The coaches went in at halftime, wanted to take a look at what he is doing comfortably, most comfortably, so they can keep looking at that and have him keep doing that and said the big thing is we want to make sure our protections are right. Rex Ryan said this is two great defenses going at it. Whoever plays best, longest is going to win. I said, would you think after the three interceptions about pulling Mark? He said, when I decide to do that is when I do that. Whoever's a 
quarterback, Dustin Keller may not be in his questionable right now with an ankle injury. Too bad for Dustin Keller. Laura, thank you very much. Keller's missed so much time already with a hand screen injury. Now the ankle and Sanchez just throws it away on first down. Under heavy pressure, initially Dan Williams and later Sam Acho. Nice job, you see. Patrick Peterson very comfortable in press coverage. Sanchez comes out of it. No place to go. Obviously commit to protection. It's a two-man route on the outside. They're dropping people underneath. Just no place to go with the ball. Okay, oh, under 5-1. Five, five, one. Five, one. Under, under 5-1. AD. 180. Second down and 10 from the 23. They give it to Sean Green, and he is shot down by Washington. Up to the 27-yard line, and some of the numbers from the first half. You heard Laura uh, relaying her conversation, Brian, with Ken Wisenhunt and saying, you know, we'll find some of the things he seemed comfortable with. Was there anything yeah. that you felt this Arizona offense looked comfortable with with Ryan Lindley? throwing the football. The most comfortable thing I I, I'm, I have for Ryan Lindley is turn around and hand the ball off because he's just not throwing the ball real well. He's not seeing the defense against a very complex scheme and he has no confidence in what he's seeing down the field. Of course, Mark Sanchez has not fared any better. In fact, his team has not scored. And now on third down, Sanchez should have been intercepted for the fourth time. William Gay, and that could have been Six the other way. I asked you at halftime, could Rex Ryan say in a media market like New York, this is just a bad day for Mark Sanchez. I'm going to sit him down, let him watch for the second half of the game, bring in Greg McElroy, and then go back to Sanchez next week. You no. looked at me like I was mad. <laughs> well, this is not this is not baseball. In baseball, if your pitcher's having a bad day, that's you know, that's basic to it. Football-wise, when you pull a starter like Mike's, Mark Sanchez, particularly in a town like this, particularly on the year that he's having, remember now, he came in in the first two years, he was a caretaker and did a nice job with it. And hopefully they'd hope that he'd evolve into the position that when they got here, not as good on defense, not running the ball as well, offensive line only so-so, that you have a quarterback that raises the level of play of those around him. Right now, Mark Sanchez isn't able to do that. I don't know how much confidence he has in himself. I don't know how much confidence they have in him. But if you pull him right now, intellectually, sure, it can make sense. But emotionally, he's done in this town. Well, in let me ask you, you use a baseball analogy, and, and I, I know where you're going there. I, I would liken it more along the lines of you have a starter who's a young guy who's been in your starting rotation, say, for a couple of years. And then all of a sudden, he's having a bad year, and you take him out of the rotation and maybe send him to the minor leagues for a month. Now, obviously, in football, you don't go to the minor leagues. But the point being is, can a guy just have a bad game and you say, I want him to sit down for a half Absolutely. without declaring that he's no longer the future of my franchise as my quarterback? If it were just this game that Mark Sanchez is having a bad year and it's at the wrong time in his career, you either stay with him, you ride it out. The number one question for both these franchises going forward right now is, it, it's, it's a matter of, what are we going to do at the quarterback position? And, and, and I don't know that they have the answer right now. They're going to have to spend the rest of this season. I don't care who wins this game. And I think maybe one team will win. We'll find out. But no matter what the outcome of this game, that's job one. What is our quarterback situation? Obviously, in Arizona, it's a question. I think it is in New York as well. Well, we'll talk more about it on the Arizona side and throughout the remainder of this game on a third down. Cardinals have not converted third down in the entire game, and they still have 0 for 10 on third down. Well, you know what? I'm going to ask you right now. You're 0 for 10 on third down. It's Ryan Lindley's second career start. You just pulled the guy who's his backup this week anyway with Kevin Cobb still injured. Watching what you're watching today. Can you go to Skelton today? 
I can, but I'm not sure they don't already know what they need to know about Skelton. They need to find out about Lindley. They may already know. This guy was a six-round draft choice that a year ago was getting ready for the New Orleans Bowl. It was a late draft choice that they thought likely was going to be on their practice squad, and now he's starting for you against New York. A lot of questions on this team. A lot of questions we'll find out in this game and for the rest of the season. I guess the home to Grimaldi's Pizza, located below the Brooklyn Bridge. They have a Grimaldi's Pizza out in uh, Arizona. Of course, out in Arizona, they uh, they flex their muscles a little bit over Pizzeria Bianco in downtown Phoenix. Here's a first down carry by Sean Green out across the 35 up to the 36-yard line, a gain of five on first down. And this, in my opinion, is obviously what New York's got to do. They got to run, run, and run the ball some more force Arizona to build that proverbial eight-man box and then maybe then play action fake and let my struggling quarterback clearly see where I want to throw the ball because right now he's not reading coverage and rotation very well additional offensive lineman checking in on this second down and five and again it is green power running straight ahead and that's a first down up to the 44 It's Jason Smith, the extra wide body they brought in for that second and five. Just overloading the line, trying to build as a wide a picket fence, we call it, as you can, stretch the defense out. Yellow lady, cut! Lieutenant! Diamond, diamond, diamond. Uh, Lieutenant! Again, and another good pickup. Gain of first to four on first down. Running it might be the wise choice the way it's gone so far. Three interceptions have been thrown by Mark Sanchez. Also has been dropped a couple of times. Got a sack. That was just a, a spectacular defensive play by Patrick Peterson. Should have been a fourth interception to Lance Jets. Offensive possession by William Gay. And Sanchez, second most turnovers among all quarterbacks in the NFL, going back to 2009. And that one through the fingertips of Bilal Powell. Third down coming up. Well, it's just what we needed to do. They, we're going to run the ball and make the defense. You can see right here, we're going to put everybody up on the line of scrimmage. That means everybody else is one-on-one. -on -one. And now I'm going to look to the outside, but I got no place to go with the ball. Now I'm going to drop it off underneath. Here's where he wanted to go right here. Patrick Peterson has already baited him into one throw. He's not going to let it happen again. And now just a simple thing like a check down, and that's the hard thing. When you're at this point in the season, you're struggling. It's the simple things that seem to elude you. Third down and six, Jets are two of seven on third down and sacked all the way back to the 38-yard line by William Gay as Sanchez. Going to see it right off the edge here, and Sanchez clearly didn't know it was a free runner. He had his vision downfield. He caught him with a zone blitz. Again, a classic Steeler-style blitz. Ray Horton coming from the Steelers. Ken Wisenhunt bringing him in. Ray Horton's a guy that's going to get a lot of attention when the head coaching searches begin at the end of the season. His defense playing brilliantly today. Peterson receives the ball at the three, slips and falls at the ten. Hopefully he's all right. Yep, he's popping right back up. Frustrating day for both teams. 3-0 Arizona. Three nothing Cardinals in front. Arizona getting the football for the first time here in the second half. Only six out of 21, 48 yards, and an interception. Powell bouncing it, leap draw to defender, and did he lose the football? No saying the ground caused the fumble. Good call. Well, that, that's a little dicey. I'm not sure it didn't start to move before. 
He wasn't touched as it came down. And Rex Ryan has thrown his flag to challenge his call. And the question is, what sent him down to the ground? Because I'm not sure he was touched as the ball started to come out. See, he, he, right there, if there's no contact there, and I'm not sure that we saw any, he's going to the ground on his own. The ball doesn't cross, cause, the ground doesn't cause a fumble. When did the touching of him begin, and when did the ball begin to come out? I think you got to look at that back knee when the defender went to try and New York undercut is the challenging runner. the ruling on the field that the runner was down by contact prior to the ball coming loose. And, I mean, it could be a, a jersey just rubbing up against the player's knee for it to be contact. They'll take a look. So will we, and you take a look. Well, we have to see, was there contact there? And so far, we haven't seen a view that says there is. And then secondly, did the ball start to trickle out before he was contacted? We cannot see if there was any contact there. And now as Bart Scott comes screaming in here, did the ball start to move out before he touched him? Clearly, there's recovery by the Jets. So that part of it's simple. That's the one part that is clear. Is there contact here? It was ruled. No contact on the field. Let's see what the official says. I don't know that there's enough to overturn it. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. New York will be charged with his first time out of the second half. And because this challenge is unsuccessful and was their second challenge, New York is out of challenges for the remainder of the game. And it was worth the challenge because there were a couple moving elements there. I, the fact that it's confirmed means he saw visual evidence that I didn't see. <laughs> I, I would have let it stand, but I don't know that I would have confirmed it. Remember, when you say it stands, it means I didn't say anything to change my mind. If I confirm it, it means I saw visual evidence to reaffirm what we called on the field. Either way, it stays with Arizona's ball. And in a game like we have seen so far anyway, Brian, and who knows, we may see each team score two or three touchdowns the rest of the way. You never know how it goes. But based on what we've seen so far, why wouldn't you challenge here if you're Rex Oh, absolutely. Ryan? Absolutely. So you really think we're going to see two or three more touchdowns I didn't here? say that. <laughs> we have seen stranger things. <laughs> yes, we have. I don't know how much stranger, but we have seen stranger things. There's a second down for the Cardinals and power. A gain of almost two. We invite you to call Star Star NFL to download NFL Mobile now and get coverage of every NFL game. Cardinals still looking to convert on third down for the first time in the game today. 0 for 10. The one guy I'm not going to let Brian Lee to get to is this guy right here, Larry Fitzgerald. I'll let him go anywhere else he wants, but not there. If Gerald has one catch, and this is back to what we saw at the end of the first half. I mean, the Cardinals are rarely within five or seven yards of even completing a pass. Well, right now, Ryan Lindley doesn't even know what he's seeing. We talked about earlier, it's one thing to have calm in the face of a lot of pressure. It's another to be oblivious of what's going on around you. And in that fog of war, and, and, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, but that's where Ryan Lindley is right now. And in his second start as a rookie, I don't blame him against one of the more complex looks in the National Football League. The fog of war is a kind term for what he's seeing right now. Well, he's asked to deal. He has certainly been one very bright spot for this Cardinal team this year. Their punter out of Ohio University. Penalty flag down. And the Jets, with pretty pretty good field position, will have that, it appears, taken back. During the return, the legal block in the back, number 20, receiving team. It's a 10-yard penalty. Be first down. Timeout. See it right here. Look, kind of pedestrian, just kind of rides a little right. bit. It's that first last down. little shove that cost him. And he really didn't need it. So trotting back onto the field is Mark Sanchez. His team is only down 3-0. We have 8.20 to play here in the third quarter. This drive will now begin at the 23. 
Sanchez, 9 of 19, 95 yards, three interceptions. Which one? Very good look. Five of their last six series, three plays or less. Green tripped up. That appeared to be a painful collision to the knee of Green, who's slow to get up. He does get up. Well, when Washington comes in, he comes in hard and he comes in low. Well, we said that, uh, you know, with the pressures they want to bring up the middle of this defense right here. Again, Darrell Washington, he knows he's going to take his shot here. Well, that's right on the five. One of those is, uh, that one hurts. You're going to feel that one tomorrow. The throw, and that did not fool this very good. Arizona defense. Let's check in back in Los Angeles for the first time today with Patrick Goneen. Tom, thanks very much. 49ers and the Rams. Colin Kaepernick in his own 17-yard line drops back. Well, 17 yards, and he throws it away. Intentional grounding. That's a safety. So it's a now 7-2 ball game in the third. That certainly will keep the debate going. The quarterback position. Back to Tom and Coach Billick. I'd like to get Coach Billick's thoughts on what's going on out there in San Francisco. We'll uh, pick up on that theme in a moment. So that's a 7-2 game. Sounds like the Giants and the Cardinals back in the NLCS. Third down. Batted down. All right, Brian, right to it. Still looking at this batted ball. And replaying that, Sanchez is going to hear the boos. Your thoughts on, you know, we discussed the quarterback situation here. Well, what do you think about what Jim Harbaugh is doing out there in San Francisco? I think it's a bold move, but I like what I see in Colin Kaepernick. It's not fair to Alex Smith. I understand that, but it's not fair that Pete Best got pulled and Ringo Starr came into the Beatles. Hey, that's just life. I think there's something special about Colin, Colin Kaepernick. Keep in mind they moved up in the second round to get him. He's their guy. I think it's going to be a good move. I tell you what, I don't know many things in this world, but I bet a lot of dough that Peter Best's name on a Fox NFL telecast has just happened for the first time. As we went to commercial break, Greg McElroy, who has spent the entire year as a number three quarterback, missed all of last season after injuring his thumb in the preseason, is up and throwing with a helmet on. All the way back to the 21 is Lindley. Harris, the first man there, and Scott finished him off. But Greg McElroy beginning now to throw on the sideline. Does that mean he's coming into this game? Well, in terms of the play here, Arizona's seeing the pressure on the inside like we thought would come because of this reshuffled offensive line. To answer your question about McElroy, <laughs> you know, it's good news, bad news. Good news is you get to play, son. Bad news is, is against a team that's already picked off the ball three times and is a top ten defense. Second down. Stevens Howland spins out of one tackle, but the former Cardinal Calvin Pace keeps him sealed to the inside and has help behind him. Pace, a former first round pick in 2003 by the Cardinals and left as a free agent. To come to the Jets in 2008, been a good player for New York. We're uh, we're going to see a draw, a draw or a screen here. We just saw the screen, so my guess is a draw here. I don't know uh, he's going to call timeout, but I don't know that Ken Wisenhunt wants his rookie quarterback up three nothing to try to make a throw here on third and a ton. Yeah, third and twenty. Then a timeout. Times were tough before this one started. They've gotten even more difficult for Mark Sanchez and the Jets, trailing 3-0. And, and Mark Sanchez, what, what I see in Mark Sanchez, to, to make a comparison, I always hesitate to make comparisons sometimes because it's as though you're drawing a conclusion, but I think we're seeing a similar path of a Joy Harrington, a guy that came in and has certain skills, the, the lack of the completion percentage that I keep coming back to. And he had a tough learning curve in the sense that he didn't get to learn his rookie year saying, hey, let it, let, just let it go. He was on a good football team. It was managed the game. So he really never had, never had a chance to learn in that capacity. He's never had to have that team he had to put on his back right now. And right now, it just appears too much for him. Floyd. 
final game, the Cardinals will punt. And McElroy looks like he's set to make his NFL debut. Now, what's going to be interesting is as McElroy comes in, what is it they're going to try to do with him? Will he see things more clearly? Again, this Arizona Cardinal defense, defensive coordinator Ray Horton, has done a heck of a job of confusing the veteran, Mark Sanchez. We'll see what he wants to do with Craig McElroy. Zastadil off the left foot. Fair catch at the 30. So now the crowd. Always waiting for the next guy. In New York, sometimes that doesn't last all that long. Greg McElroy is 24 years old. He grew up in South Lake, Texas, just outside of Dallas. Played collegiately, a three-year starter at the University of Alabama, where he won a national championship. And after missing his entire rookie year with a thumb injury, he makes his NFL debut here in week 13 of 2012. And on the first play, there is a penalty. Now we talked about the great timing of Adrian Wilson on a previous pressure that got home. I think he didn't time it quite as well because I think he jumped off sides here on the edge. Off sides, number 24, defense, five yard penalty. So rather than starting first and ten in your NFL debut, you start first and five. That's not a bad equation. I'll take it. Which is a great opportunity to throw the ball here. My guess is they'll run it. Michael Roy, a seventh round draft pick in 2011 out of Alabama. And a big gainer crossing midfield is Bilal Powell. Nice job. I want you to watch as they pull out the fullback right into here. Seals that edge. Nice job on the outside, then getting to the outside, getting into that second level. Of course, going with McElroy, the crowd loves it. He executed that play much better than Mark Sanchez did, obviously. Get it once more, and that's a gain of close to five. So, Brian, I, I just want to make sure here now that you know, I don't want to admit anybody to misunderstand, and obviously you're not a uh, a mind reader here, but you have been in this position as an NFL head coach, and and I think we all agree, not that it's it's more difficult in one spot more so than another spot when you're losing games. You're losing, you're losing. But here in New York, you're certainly under more of the magnifying glass, if you will. By making this decision, when your team is being shut out with four minutes left to go in the third quarter, first pass by McElroy, and it's incomplete. Rex Ryan still leaves himself wiggle room here to start Sanchez if he so chooses again next week. Oh, absolutely. Make no mistake, and this is just my perspective, but Rex Ryan could very well come back and say just what you're saying, Tom. Look. He wasn't seen. It wasn't happened. I wanted to change the dynamic. What I'm telling you is my history in this league says when you pull a starter the level of Mark Sanchez, at this point in the season struggling the way your team has, you, this isn't your guy. Maybe he'll come back and be your guy next week, but this isn't the guy that you're betting the franchise on going down the way. Jets two for nine. McElroy is second throw, and it's, and it's the first down. To Stephen Hill. And New York, no different than any other city in the National Football League. When your team is struggling and your quarterback is struggling, you want the next guy up in line. Boy, they'll jump on the bandwagon in a heartbeat. And I'll make the same comment I made about Sanchez. The best friend right now is to continue to play action fake, make them bring Adrian Wilson into the box of the defense, create the one-on-one -on -one that allows him to see what he's throwing. I'd be very wary of Patrick Peterson. He may yet bait McElroy into a turnover. Well, this run game certainly helps. Powell. 
batter of 32. Of course, the Jets made the deal in the offseason for Tim Tebow. They win their opener, scoring 48 in Buffalo. After a 2-1 start, they get walloped by the 49ers. They go to 3-4 and four after that overtime defeat against New England. Then embarrassed by those same Patriots on Thanksgiving, losing 49-19 to go to 4-7 and seven on the year. And here we are. Ten days after that Thanksgiving Day game, Thanksgiving night game, and Rex Ryan has pulled Mark Sanchez in favor of Greg McElroy, who steps out of bounds, and that'll be a late hit. And that's a mistake on the part of Dan Williams. It wasn't a vicious hit, but the contact clearly came while in the paint. Personal foul, unnecessary rough is number 92. Or right there, Nash. Well, no, excuse me. It was Nash 59. Williams kind of trailed in. But it was the fact that it was the contact clearly out of bounds, not needed, Correction, is what the call. The distance to the goal. Now, this is where the package before. And right here, he's clearly in the paint. Nash was out of bounds yep. when he initiated the contact. Number 63 is the package is down here is where Joe out. McKnight got very interesting. We've already seen the jet sweep. We've seen the fake sweep with the run. We may see a boot action off it at some point if they begin to spread this thing out. Right now, it looks like they might just go downhill. Well, the penalty moves the ball down to the inside the 15-yard line, and they hand it off on first down. Powell to the inside. And he's inside the five, down to the three-yard line. And again, Hilliard, the fullback leading the way for Bilal Powell. It's the counteraction of the running game right now that is catching up. Watch the fullback here. They start one way and then peel back the other way. We've seen this twice now where he's got the Arizona defense over-pursuing and putting the running back one-on-one -on -one with your safety rows. Rich Ryan not only uh, shuffling the deck here at quarterback, but on this drive outside of the very start of it, it has been Powell in the backfield rather than Sean Green. Now, Powell has been getting more and more playing time as this season has gone on. He'll trot off now in favor of Green as it is second goal at the three. If they're going to throw the ball... I'm not sure they will here. It's likely with a boot or waggle oh, that gets McElroy outside of the protection. Oh, Second and goal. They're going to hand it to Green. And trying to get to that goal line. No signal given. He is just short on what will be the final play of the third quarter. Jets bang it on the door. Third and goal when we come back. The NFL on Fox continues after a break from your local Fox station. The change at quarterback on this drive made by Rex Ryan and his team that much short. Of scoring for the first time, it is third down and goal. Green in the eye. They fake it. McElroy throws. Touchdown. Jeff Cumberland. McElroy's looking for the ball. He says, can I have it back? It's my first touchdown pass in the National Football League. That one's going to go on my hand. And like we said, if you're going to have your young quarterback throw, get him outside of the protection, make it very clear cut. I'm not sure he couldn't have just run it in. But he's going to enjoy the touchdown pass more. And after is good. Greg McElroy jerseys are going off the shelves all over New York City right now.
Well, for the first time, life in the Meadowlands. As Greg McElroy makes his NFL debut, comes off the bench in the third quarter, and leads his team on a scoring drive for the first time today, capped off by the touchdown pass to Jeff Cumberland. Liam Powell a couple of yards out of his own end zone. And runs through one tackle and up to the 22. Well, Saturday, the UFC returns to Fox. Lightweight champion Benson Henderson will put his title on the line against top contender Nate Diaz. A full night. The coverage of UFC on Fox 5 begins this Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, only on Fox. Well, we saw one quarterback change today made on that sideline. As you see, McElroy, 10 plays, 54 yards, a touchdown pass in relief of Sanchez. Meanwhile, Ken Wisenhunt will stay with Ryan Lindley. And that is batted down at the line of scrimmage. Lindley now 8 out of 25 for 53 yards. Well, when you empty the backfield against Rex Ryan, many times that will trigger a pressure that's going to be one more than whatever you got to block. And that's a tough position to put Ryan Lindley in. Fitzgerald made a catch. The first series of the game. We have not called his name since. Exactly what happened last week in a loss to the St. Louis Rams. Boy Fitzgerald in his nine years, ten different starting quarterbacks. Josh McCown, Sean King, John Navar. And then great success with a great Kurt Warner. Followed by Liner, failed number one pick. Anderson, failed free agent. Max Hall, this year, Skelton, Cobb, now Lindley. One of only four receivers on one team to play with ten different quarterbacks in their first nine seasons in the league. And his production is really starting to suffer since Kurt Warner left. You're talking about not only one of the great receivers, one of the great players in this league. It's another three and out for the Cardinals. And, of course, in Arizona, Brian, they're beginning to ask the question. Not knowing what your situation is at quarterback, unless you're going to bring Kevin Cobb back, you have to pay him a lot of money. And, man, has he been beat up ever since he came to your team as a free agent two years ago much like steve nash of the phoenix suns would you consider trading away larry fitzgerald to another team yeah and i hear that and uh, and i just one you're not going to get the appropriate value uh you're not going to give up a player the quality of larry fitzgerald i right, hold that thought because i know you have more to add to that we still got a game here seven three a minute into the fourth quarter Greg McElroy in his second year out of Alabama making his NFL debut in relief of Mark Sanchez took over the last Jets possession and thanks in part due to a 15-yard penalty took the Jets 54 yards and their first score of the game 7-3 with under 14 minutes to go well when you make a decision like that but especially here in New York that is all you're going to hear about and read about the entire week. I mean, let's be honest about it. Ever since that game against New England on Thanksgiving Day night, that's all they've been talking about and writing about here in New York anyway. That is this the final audition, if you will, for Mark Sanchez over the final five weeks of the season to remain as a quarterback for 2013. I made the comparison to Joey Harrington, another first round draft, draft choice, a top 10 draft choice. That again, that, that's an organizational decision. That's why I was talking about the direction that you set your organization on when you make a change like this. It goes beyond this game. It goes really beyond this year. 
Third down and six. And McElroy looking around. Lays it off out of the backfield. And the ball is loose. And into the arms of Washington. So a Jets turnover at the 35-yard line by Khalil Bell, who just checked into the game for the first time all day long, and he coughs it up on the big hit made by Kerry Rhodes. And it's a smart move by McElroy, figuring this guy is a lot better at securing the ball than I would be taking that same hit. There again, Darrell Washington around the ball. Fabulous hit. Coughing up the ball by Rhodes. Bell has bounced around over the last couple of seasons and in there on a third down and six in a 7-3 game in the fourth quarter. Now, B.D. Wells stuck to the line of scrimmage. And certainly the questions has to be asked, why in the world or what is Bell doing in the game unless somebody is hurt? I mean, allegedly, that's what we were told, why you have Joe McKnight getting a chance to come in there and, and catch a pass on a third down or be in that kind of formation. We've seen a lot in this game from... For Sean Green and a, and a big chunk of this game of Bilal Powell. Well, this is a league of, of uh, running back by committee. Uh, but right now, they're not getting anything consistently out of the running game. And that's making it a tough day for the rookie Lindley. And now Lindley throws to the far side. And it is... What? That's a catch by Michael Floyd. Right foot, left foot, possession. Let's see if he maintains it all the way through. The ball stays firm. I believe that's a catch. Remember now, New York has no more challenges. Yep. And so by the way, we are being told the reason Bell is in the game, we were not told until just a moment ago that the Knight went out with a rib injury. And the first down, it is beating Wells. Not much running room there for him. So that's why Bell was in the game. But when he got his chance, took a hard hit from Terry Rhodes, the former Jet who already has a couple of interceptions today and now forces a third turnover. And this is really limiting for Ken Wisenhunt. He just can't seem to get anything going in the running game. If they're going to get it in the end zone against this Jet defense, it's probably going to take a throw because they've not shown the ability to run the ball in the open field or in the red zone to the degree it's going to take to get it all the way in the end zone. And there's just too much thinking going on right now. Larry Fitzgerald, and boy, you, you can't, you got to take your hat off to Larry Fitzgerald. How many diva receivers do we know would be going off in a situation like that? Brian Lindley not seeing it the same way as Larry Fitzgerald. Right now, you just got to call a play with minimal adjustment and hope that Ryan Lindley sees it because there's too much thinking going on right now, whether it be a check, reading a secondary rotation, or if a receiver has to change his route based on the line. Oh, for 13 on third down today. And they're coming after Lindley, who gets it away. Fitzgerald, and it's not like Lindley took a hit because he did not. He flat out missed a wide open Larry Fitzgerald. And he did it because he rushed the throw because he really couldn't be sure how protected he was. He had adequate protection. He had the tight end and the back, both in the backfield. They did a nice job on protection, but because of that inexperience, he was guessing how quickly the ball had to come out. Making it inside the right upright is feeling. It's a one-point game. Still a long way to go in this one. Greg McElroy took over in the third quarter for Mark Sanchez. And now Antonio Cromarty is dropped back to return this kick by Jay Feely. A 7-6 game. Cardinals go 18 yards after the fumble by Khalil Belf. Can only manage a field goal. Now they trail by a single point for Marty from the four. And drag down just across the 25. 
John F. Kennedy High School, the Hall of Fame, our distinguished director, Artie Kempner, inducted last night. How about that? That's big time. And I must say, that is the first time I've seen Artie without a ball cap on. I didn't know if he had hair or not. We just got that picture because he just got finished right around halftime wrapping up his acceptance speech from the ceremonies <laughs> last night. Congratulations, man. Artie, That's congratulations. Great. So well-deserved. And uh, we are so fortunate to have Artie as our director each and every week alongside our producer, Bob Stetter. Well, we can talk about the ineffectiveness up until that last drive in the New York Jets offense, but let's keep in mind, let's give a little credit to this defense of the Arizona Cardinals. They've gotten enough turnovers to give their offense a chance to get a lead. They certainly have had a hand in the ineffectiveness of Mark Sanchez, whatever the view happens to be on whether you think Sanchez is a good quarterback or not, you being rhetorical. Personally. Second down. What? Nice throw out there. To Jeremy Curley. Well short of the first down. It'll bring up third down. You know, McElroy was the seventh round draft choice. Obviously, incredibly successful at Alabama. People saw him as a game manager. Maybe a, a solid backup in this league. Uh, that doesn't mean, you know, people thought Tom Brady was going to be just a backup in this league when he was taken in the sixth round. Very intelligent young man. And obviously knows how to perform under the big spotlight. Third down and six. McElroy rolling and just throws it away. Chased by Darnell Dockett. So it's interesting, uh, Brian, uh, I'm kind of curious, and we were talking about this. It was brought up by our statistician, uh, our spotter up here, uh, Scott Snyder. You know, if Tim Tebow were healthy and not out with a pair of fractured ribs, is he the guy that comes in in relief today, or does Rex Ryan maybe not make that move? Well, if, if not now, when would it would have been? Right. Why did you bring Tim Tebow in? Whether that would have been the right thing or the wrong thing, of course, we'll never know, at least in this game, because he is inactive. But, um, yeah, if not now, when? And why did you bring him in? Well, as ugly as it has been for Arizona offensively, nine of their 13 possessions, three and out. They're down by a point. They have the ball. With 9-12 to go. And the rookie Ryan Lundley, who has struggled and struggled mightily here today, puts the ball in the hands of Beanie Wells, and that is a gain of two. Rashad Johnson on the 40-yard fake punt run had more rushing yards on that single carry than the trio of Beanie Wells, Marad Stevens Howling, and William Powell combined on 20 rushing attempts. And here's why they're doing this virtually on every single snap putting eight and nine guys in the box and saying, we are not going to let you run. We're going to let you do that all day long. Gordon Long coming up. And let's check in back in Los Angeles with Kurt Benefee. San Francisco up eight on the Rams late. Colin Kaepernick pitches. Whoops. Over the head of Ted Ginn Jr. Janoris Jenkins scoops it up. Scores a touchdown. Rams go for two. And after a penalty, it's seven yards they need. They get it. Lance Kendrick's game-time two-point conversion. 10-10, 3-0-4 left to play. Tom and Brian, are we looking at another overtime tie? And one of those already, of course. They drop down to one. They just do get it off on third down. And Randy is buried all the way back to the 23 by Wilkerson. And Arizona now zero for 15 on third down attempts. Oh for 15. And Ken Wisenhunt 
needs to seriously think about maybe going with Skelton because right now Ryan Lindley just can't process what's going on on the other side of the ball by way of pressure, by way of protection. Early the fair catch at the 25. Well, coming up this January, TV's biggest phenomenon, American Idol, is back. New judges, you know, Brian. Mariah Carey, Keith Urban, Nicki Minaj. Join Randy Jackson and Ryan Seacrest for Idol's biggest season yet. American Idol, Wednesday, January 16th on Fox. Ryan making a move in the third quarter. Giving the hook to Mark Sanchez and plugging in Greg McElroy in the first down carry by Green with the cross of 30. And up to the 32 and a good carry on first down for Sean Green. And as un as unambitious as it sounds for Rex Ryan and the New York Jets, you have to size up the way this game's been going, that Arizona's shown no capacity whatsoever to move the ball down the field. It would take literally about only a turnover for Arizona to score right now and the way things are going. So that's what the play calling is going to reflect. Run the ball. We've already seen McElroy outside the protection scheme. One man routes, boots and waggles, make it very simple, very clean. And see if we can run the ball and pop one outside like this to put us in scoring position. Or a sloppy tackling, rarely have we seen that from Arizona, but they had Green about five yards behind the line of scrimmage and couldn't bring him down. And what happens, it gets sucked up inside, and he just kind of gets bounced to the outside. They're all collapsing in here, thinking he's about to go down. Adrian Wilson taking a bad angle because it looked like he was going to get wadded up into the middle of the line, and then Sean Green bounces it outside like a pinball machine. Green out of Winslow Township High School in New Jersey. Played collegiately at the University of Iowa. He's finally put it in the hands of Powell, and that's a gain of three. You know, Green was an amazing storm. It's been told many times before, but, but Brian, I was there when he was at the University of Iowa covering the Hawkeyes regularly. And you know, he originally started at a community college, went to Iowa became ineligible he was eligible by ncaa standards but not by kirk ferens their head coach his standards so he was no longer on the football team he was working for a, a moving company and trying to earn his way back into the good graces of the program continued to work out and boy when he got his chance back to the hawkeyes he was something mcelroy gonna run it he took a vicious lick from dan williams but pops right back up to his feet and brings up a very critical third down and two. Oh, and three. Frankly, okay, it looked like a, that was not a favorable spot for the Jets. Yeah, this is a little bit longer than, yeah. than, uh, than what it looked like. This is going to put, again, Matt Roy in a position. Anything but a turnover. They're going to go from the gun. He may still sprint out from here. You might even see a trap or a draw. Time out. Very sharp young man off the field, Greg McElroy, back when he was at Alabama. Was the National Football Foundation National Scholar Athlete Award finalist for the William Campbell Trophy. That's basically the academic Heisman. So a very bright young man. Three-year starter at Alabama. They're now making his NFL debut. Saturday, the UFC returns to Fox. The lightweight champion, Benson Henderson, will put his title on the line against top contender Nate Diaz. UFC on Fox 5 begins Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, only on Fox. All right, third down, and then really it's closer to four than it is three. 
Another situation, Brian, where maybe you roll him out of the pocket a little bit? Yeah, I think we'll see one or two things. If they get into the gun like they were previously, you can still sprint him out of the gun or give one of those little inside play fakes like we see so much in college football. He's familiar with that with his time in Alabama. And then continue to ride over the outside or make a one-on-one -on -one throw on the outside after the play fake. Blitz coming. McElroy wants it down the sideline. It's intercepted. There is a penalty flag down. Looked like the receiver and a defender got tangled up. Oh, they're going to call this on Polar. Right here, once he gets by, gets the hand on right there, and it's that last little who boy. While the quarterback was still in the pocket, illegal contact, number 28, defense. Five-yard yeah. penalty. I'm going to have to look at that one again. It looked like he had contact within the five-yard period, but as he was getting off, I don't know if I saw a jersey grab or a little less, but that, that looked like a clean bump to me. Patrick Peterson's jaw on these officials pretty good. He's got to get back into it. Rex Ryan will take it any way he can get it. So first down, ball at the 38-yard line. Sean Green checks back in. In the back of that eye formation, they put it in his hands. Good running run for Green. And that clock now under five minutes to play. Cardinals have two timeouts remaining. That's what you do when you got a young quarterback that doesn't want to make a mistake. Keep pounding away, pounding away. This allows Greg McElroy, when he does have to make throws, to make a clean read. You don't want him to try to, at this stage in the game, try to fix that, uh, figure out this very good Arizona Cardinals secondary. Just give me one-on-one -on -one reads when I need to throw the ball, and the best way to do that is to run the ball to set it up. Ball start, number 85, offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. That's it. That's a silly mistake right there by Schillinger to second down and five. And now you're going to go to second down and ten. And nothing made me matter than a wide receiver on the outside that has absolutely nothing to do with this play. Moving and costing me because this is this this puts you in a tough position. This pushes you back out of field goal range, which now means that has to be my priority. Green's still on his feet, but not much running room. So third down and eight for the Jets. Right now would be roughly about a 55, 56 yard field goal try. It's not a matter of whether Folk has the leg for it. We know that he does. He's three out of four from 50 yards and beyond this year. But at this point in the game, in a one-point game, do you want an Arizona team possibly to take the football over roughly right around the 40-yard line? And in a game that Nick Foles has already missed, too. McElroy steps up, throws. It is a catch for a first down by Curley. And what a beautiful throw by McElroy. That had some hair on it. Well, that back shoulder throw we see so often. Patrick Peterson now, surprisingly, that's two times. Let's see if he has control. I don't think it ever touched the ground. Nope. Very difficult to get this kind of throw against Patrick Peterson. That's the ultimate back shoulder throw because that literally hit his shoulders as he was falling back. That's a beautiful catch. Those are typically two throws we've seen, too, against Peterson today that you don't normally get. What is Great work by our crew all over that. Showing you that ball landing right between the legs of Curley to maintain possession before it hit the ground. Those are the numbers on McElroy as the Cardinals will spend a timeout. One more left. 2.44 to play. We take a look ahead to next week. It'll be a doubleheader on Fox NFL Sunday.
the Cowboys will be in Cincinnati. That could be a huge game for both of those teams. Other regional action as well in America's Game of the Week. Saints and the Giants. Some will see the Cardinals and the Seahawks. It begins with a built for tough Fox NFL Sunday pregame show in Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Now, again, the priority here, in my opinion, is three points makes this a 10-6 game against an offense in the Cardinals that has struggled to even try to get field goals, let alone touchdowns. Yeah, I'm going for touchdown. Make no mistake. But I do nothing to risk moving me out of field goal position that gives me that better than a field goal separation for a win. Green on second down, inside the 20, down to the 17. It'll bring up a third down. And another timeout taken by the Cardinals, and that's the last one they have. For all the troubles of the New York Jets due to injuries, Santonio Holmes, obviously we've got a quarterback change now. They haven't run the balls effectively. This offensive line has stayed intact for the entire season. And I will tell you what, looking around the league, Tom, that's going to be a deciding factor. Teams that have a healthy unit in the offensive line, the San Francisco 49ers, obviously on top of the pyramid in no small part because of that offensive line. The injuries that I see around the NFL in the offensive line by very good football teams, um, the Baltimore Ravens being one. You look at, obviously, in the NFC, what uh, now it looks to be getting a healthy New York Giant team. The Minnesota Vikings and what they're going through. The Chicago Bears and the upheaval that they're having in the offensive line. So that's a, that is a one advantage here that the New York Jets have that other teams have made. Lowe's post game show coming up at the conclusion of this one. And it looked like Adrian Wilson has done it again. Wow. And that is a false start. And if it is indeed the case, wow. an offside penalty, that would give the Jets offside. an automatic first down. Defense. That is a terrible mistake by a guy that's been around the league for a dozen years. Oh, boy. And he clearly was offsides. Looked like McElroy wasn't sure it was coming up that quick. Took him a little while to get away from center. Clearly, Adrian Wilson in the key is it converts a first down on a team that was willing to run on a third medium and basically capitulate the down. We'll kick the field goal if we have to. That's what that call indicated. You just gave him a first down inside the 15-yard line. Well, they run one play, and you can bet the house it is a running play. And the Cardinals can't stop it again. Green to the five. And this will take us down to the two-minute warning. Okay, Green has been a workhorse here today. He has just eclipsed 100 yards rushing on the afternoon. Covering that ball up with both hands. This will get to the two-minute warning. And the Cardinals are two minutes away from what would be an eight-game losing streak. Second down and three. They actually spotted at the six and green. Wisely, it appears, Brian fell down before going into the end zone. Absolutely. Scoring does you no good at that point, really, because all it does is leave the potential, as unlikely as it is, for a two-score. We saw this in the Super Bowl last year, right? Although he didn't fall into the end zone because now we're under two minutes. Arizona has no timeouts. You take the knees, game over. My mistake wouldn't have been two scores. Would have been one score. Eight points. Even smarter. Well, more importantly, they get the first down on that carry, which means now they can Absolutely. just run out the clock. That's the point. With no timeouts, did the exact right thing. So here in New York, where obviously before this game ever started, there was much debate about Mark Sanchez and his future. Would these final five games be his audition to keep his job looking ahead of next year? In the third quarter on this Sunday afternoon with the Jets being shut out 3-0, Rex Ryan said, 
We're going to give Greg McElroy a try. Now what? Well, and you don't even have to wait for the morning papers. He's going to walk off this field and walk into a press conference. And you know what the first question is going to be. Who's your starting quarterback next week versus Jacksonville? Well, for Arizona, it is the fourth eight-game losing streak since the merger. Start of the year 4-0. Going to be a rough night ahead for Mark Sanchez. Granted, his team won, but you wonder... What is his future now with the Jets? Well, we're going to find out. We're not going to find out in one week. This is something that's got to be addressed all the way to the end of the season. But right now, they're going to take the win and get ready for next week. So the Jets now 5-7. and seven. Cardinals go to 4-8. 7-6 on final.